been on Skiddy 16, 17 months, had an awesome time with the app. I feel online lessons are the way to go. A bit more about myself um, and fixing golf swings is everyone has their own unique golf swing. You've probably heard that saying before, but there's no need to build you necessarily into a model as, as much as it building into your own model. You know, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of different models and, and ways that you can fix your golf swing. So um, it's about identifying the right one for you and helping you move your golf in the right direction. Um, and before that, I probably should have said I am from Southwest England. I'm only in sunny Spain at the moment, just having a little few days break. And obviously the advantages to skillist are I am still able to do lessons while I am sunning myself in Spain. Well, Pete is sat in England in probably not bad weather, to be fair, but it's a little bit warmer over here. Right. And hey, do you want to just introduce yourself really, really quickly? Yeah. Uh, so, hi, guys. Um, so, yeah, Pete Lockett. I've uh, been on Skillist now for a couple of years. Um, used it as almost a like backup to my business. It's now at least, I would say, 80% of my business. Um, I think online lessons uh, gives the student more time to review what's going on. And the golf coach definitely and a chance to break a sort of a pattern down into little bite-sized pieces rather than trying to tackle let's say a big golf swing you could just say look let's just work on the grip like Alex said totally agree with him in terms of everyone has their own swing I'm definitely not a model golf coach I just want to get something that is functional for the student so I'm always looking for to a certain degree the easier wins and allows the student to continue to play golf rather than having to rebuild fantastic and um, we're going to get Ken up here just having a little bit of technical difficulties but Ken do you want to just really, really quickly um, talk about where you're from and, and you know, who you are and what your game has been in the past? Because so often um, as coaches, we sort of need to know a little bit of your history. It's very hard to just dive in and, and just pull you apart because often what you are, like or almost always, students are like a conceptual Frankenstein of like everything they've been told before, everything they've read, everything they believe to be true. So it'd be great if you could sort of give the guys a little bit of an insight into who you are as a golfer. Yeah, thanks. So I picked up the game when I was uh, about nine or 10 years old, played uh, with my dad. It was just a great uh, opportunity for the two of us to play every weekend together. Um, started taking lessons when I was probably 11 or so. Uh, played competitively in the junior golf circuit. Um, lived in California, so I could play all year round. Um, played through junior golf, high school, into my first year in college. Uh, dropped the game when I started my career. Uh, I've been in law enforcement for the last 24 years. Uh, I just retired. Uh, we moved to Texas, just outside of Dallas, uh, to give my son an opportunity to play football out here for his last couple of years in high school. Um, so I took a break from the game for about 20 some odd years and just picked it up about two years ago. So I'm kind of working through some of the, the muscle memory that I developed from when I was younger. Um, I played with about a 10 handicap. Um, and it's not a easy 10, uh, I'm grinding all over the place. Um, you know, I've had one round, uh, in the last, uh, year where everything worked, you know, it was like a 76 uh, or so, um, make sure you guys can still hear me. I got like a refresh that's going on here. Yep. Can you hear you, Ken? All right. Good. I shot 76 hit fairways and greens. and It was just a fun round. Um, but besides that. Uh, more often than not, it's just it's grinding. It's it's all over the place. Uh, so consistency, um, the position and impact is really the most important thing uh, for me to develop and work on. And so you said in your comments that your miss is left, and when you mean left, you mean OB left. Is that right? I think I remember you saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, spot on. So with the driver. Um, you know, I'm either striping it with a, a good solid uh, kind of power draw um, or I'm missing it left. And by left, I mean the left turn blinkers on. And that thing is is going to be, you know, somebody's backyard, another fairway out of bounds. Just just super frustrating left. Totally. And so just before like the boys jump in really, really quickly, what do you believe to be true in the golf swing? Like, I know that that's probably a pretty open-ended question, but like, what do you have like some real fundamentals that are in your head? Like when you're standing over it, what are like the three things you always go to and what um, like 
if it's what a weight shift is or what you think a square club face is or like using your lower body? Is this, you know, some fundamentals you're always thinking about? Yeah. So I, I go back to my, my coach from when I was younger and he was very right side dominant. He was turn the right, you know, practice with just your right hand, you know, open the club with the right hand contact, turn the right hand over. So that that's sort of the muscle memory that's been ingrained with me. Um, currently, you know, thoughts are um, about tempo. Um, I'm not the most flexible guy. I work on my flexibility, but I don't take the club back as far as I'd really like to. So I, I tell myself, you know, try and get a little bit bigger shoulder turn at the top and then, uh, you know, fire the hips and, um, you know, throw the club at, at the ball and, and try and make good contact. And those are probably my three main thoughts. So tempo, turn at the back, um, and then fire the hips. The fire the hips one is interesting, Pete. What do you think? What do you reckon? Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strong, strong move, isn't it? It looks like, this, you know, yeah. like you've got plenty of speed. Um, for me, I, I would just, first I'd ask, are you looking to hit a draw? Are you, is that sort of your, you know, I know you lose it left, but you, are you naturally trying to hit a draw? And is that what you do with the rest of your game? Yes, sir. So, I mean, with that in mind, can I just ask you to just take it to the to address position for me just quickly and then yeah. just take it to the top just take it to the top uh, on both swings if that's all right top of the swing yeah so yeah so I know you said um you felt like it's not an overly long goal so I think you've got plenty of good stuff going on there uh, I think you've got good hip turn I think you've got good shoulder turn I don't even think for the large majority for somebody that's losing it left I don't think you know we'd see obvious faults of the club face closed or you know real sort of let's say, manipulate stuff at the top, I would then just ask, relative to your intent on the way down, Ben, if you could just drop it down to about halfway down in the downswing right here. That's a, that's a great that's a great position there, and about halfway down there on the left. So what I see there is what I would call quite a narrow downswing. So the club's sort of very sort of narrow relative to the right forearm, the right shoulder, sort of very, very sort of, let's say, angular. I mean, a lot of people would love the idea of, let's say, lag in that game. Um, but that to me is a lot of, let's say, stored energy you've got to get out of. You've, so not, not only is it angular, if you keep going one more frame on the right-hand side, Baden, if you go one more frame down, yeah, what you're going to see there is that club is now a long way behind you because it's almost been storing for so long, and that club is now a long way behind, let's say, your hand. So if you don't do something with your hands, that golf ball is going to go like a long way right. So the fact that you're missing the ball left and nuclear is almost a bit of a good player's reaction of going, well, I don't want to lose this ball a long way right. So it's almost like your ability to catch it up is not really the fault. It's almost like the reaction to a golf club getting so narrow and so stuck behind you. So for me, I'd like to see that golf club a little bit wider, certainly at that sort of halfway down, they did a little bit wider and get the chest open a little bit more and just really feel like in transition, you're almost allowing that club to get a bit wider and just start turning a little bit. Obviously, if you said um, you might feel like you haven't got the flexibility, then there'd be nothing wrong with slightly opening up the stance at address, you know, with those sorts of ideas. But definitely, if you take it halfway up again, baby, just to where it's really so quite narrow with the shaft, I think it's the transition bit I would like to talk about is as that shaft comes really narrow, the sort of pelvis works under. I think, have you ever in your sort of, if you take yourself back, you said you've been that sort of, learning since you're about 11 and sort of his stuff, like memories, sort of ideas. Have you ever done any just trying to hit sort of a bit more fade bias feels in terms of not necessarily asking you to do it a fade, but what it might take to feel like you're hitting almost what feels slightly wider golf swing, slightly more over the top feels. Is that something you've ever done? So I've, I've played a fade before, like for a situational shot or, or practicing on the range, but, um, I would say nine. So I wouldn't want. I wouldn't want to take. I wouldn't want to take that away from you. I think you'd be. I think your golf swing is largely based on a draw. I would just be really intrigued to see if we. If you just there we go. If you just bring that one down now on the left, Baden. So what we'd be trying to do here is to try and align the central mass, the club head, a little bit more, in line with the handle. If you just keep going a touch more, Baden, now on the left, if it can, just drop. Because I think the thing you said was brilliant. That's perfect, Baden. If you just drop the one on the right back touch. So what we got here, the, one of the things you said, Ken, which I really love, is you said, I want to improve my impact. Now, if you think about where you are there just before impact, 
imagine the type of ha- action you're going to have to have with your hands there on the right hand side. If this was the top of your backswing, like in order to hit the golf ball relatively straight, you'd have to use quite a lot of forearm rotation. And as Baden's marked there nicely with the spine angle, that's a reaction. That's you trying to find room for your downswing. If you look at a Tony Fina there on the left hand side, He's got a little bit more room to create. He's got a little bit less going on because the club's a little more lined up on the way down. I think any work that I would, I would imagine Alex would agree, any work that uh, I would like to do with you or anybody would like to do with you is just get that golf club feeling a little bit wider, a little bit less on the inside. I think that would really help if we can get the golf club to feel in transition rather than getting a little bit narrow and sort of stuck to you and then you have to sort of react and change your posture. If we felt like the golf club was getting a little bit wider, it's also going to feel like the club head's like picking up speed. As you started to turn, I think you would find a different move. Have you got your video on, Pete? Do you want to just stand up and sort of, I don't know, we can't see you. Can, can you see him? Yeah, yeah, I can stand up. Yeah, yeah. 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 You want to just like yeah. so, so, so for me, if we get up to the top of the backswing, if I use a really small golf club, if we go up to the top of the backswing and we get really sort of narrow, there's a lot of angle now to create. There's a lot of angle almost to get out of this golf club. So in order for you to almost swing the golf club to the right. The golf club's coming down. You get a little bit behind you. The golf club's staying a little bit behind you. And then it's your reaction that actually hits it left. It's your reaction to the golf club getting too far behind you. It's a good player's reaction. If you left it there, you'd hit it a long way right. I would really like to see you keep with what you got going on at the top. If anything, I feel like the club is getting a little bit further away from you. So rather than getting so narrow, mm. almost feel like the golf club's getting a little bit further away from you. And as you're, in theory, throwing the club head, start tuning. Start allowing the body to open up a little bit, which is going to allow the club in hands to sort of line up a little bit nicer. And it's going to also feel really nice because it's going to feel like, and people might say that's casting. What you're actually doing is you're almost, let's say, widening the arc. It's going to help you with strikes and help, help you hit up on the golf ball. It's almost going to feel like you're almost speeding up the club head. It's club head speed at the end of the day. And a little bit wider in transition, gives you a bit more time. The club's going to feel a little bit wider, a little more room. And as you start to turn, everything's going to line up and the golf ball should just get in the way. Does that, so make, that, sense, that make sense? Yeah, I mean that, that's fantastic, um, um, and, and it, it it definitely makes sense. Um, my question though would be, what you're seeing there is my driver. I, I do yep. the exact wing with my irons, and I think that's that's a problem with again impacts because I I pick the ball clean um, rather than um, hit the ball and then make a divot in front. Yep. Um, you know, my low point yep. of the driver path. Is going up versus hitting down. Um, so again, is that, yep. am I going to get that bolt with? Well, with, with an know, iron, obviously this is slightly different. Great question. And it's probably the right question to have asked because essentially what you've got with your club head is a club head that's a little bit too far behind you, right? With an iron swing, the club head is too far behind you, which will result in a path that is in your term, much more into out and also very shallow. So relative to an iron swing, you potentially wouldn't want to be throwing the golf club too far away from you, but definitely an idea of just turning a little bit more will start to get the golf club a little more lining up a little bit better. Because obviously with an iron, we want to create a little more forward shafting. With the driver, we want to try and get rid of that. So I would ask you just to feel a little more maybe focus on the turn aspect rather than the throwing away or casting aspect. But I think with the driver, we definitely need to get a little bit wider in transition. Yeah, that's great. Um, I know we're limited on time. Is there, is there a drill? Briefly, that you briefly, you can I, can I just, can I throw in here just two seconds? Because everything that Pete said is a hundred percent right, and I would not disagree with any part of it. Um, my question would be: obviously, the conceptually, you like to play the draw, and you wouldn't. I wouldn't change a hell of a lot from that perspective. But my question would be: how does it get into that excessively narrow position in the downswing? You know, for me. I'll build it back, and and I'm sure Pete would as well, um, is build it back a little bit further and look why it gets so narrow and so inside on the way down. And for me, I've seen a little bit of a snippet kind of from what you'll see from just past lead iron parallel to the top of your swing. It already gets super, super narrow. And, And one trigger for me from there is I don't really like to see this right arm overly fold past the 90 degree angle. So my question, or not my question, my addition to what Pete's saying is try and do it a little bit earlier in your golf swing 
as opposed to not trying to do it all at once in the downswing, but try and just feel like when you get to the top of your swing, you've got a lot more width. You've got a lot more, like, you know, a real key focus on this right arm that it doesn't get past the 90 degree angle. So you can maintain that width to the top of your swing. You can still have that great move that makes the club on the uh, come on the inside on the way down. But I think that'll make it less narrow, as Pete was saying. The club will be way more in front of you. Um, and you'll be able to get it back, get that energy back out to the ball, exactly like Pete was saying. Mm. I, th- I think I think Alex is absolutely right. And I think it'd be a good question to ask yourself of where do you think power comes from? Yeah. Because you know, we all we all get to the top and want to go, right, well, I want to hit this ball a long way, especially the driver. You know, we're supposed to hit it a long way within reason. The ideas of where power comes from, I think, might be at the moment just a little bit sort of say pulley on the handle, a bit snatchy. And then right. they get this idea of like Alex says again, everything gets getting narrow, then it continues to get narrow, and the rest of it's a reaction. You're almost trying to feel like maybe it's a little bit wider at the top, maybe a little bit wider on the way down, a bit more patient with it all. Maybe to a certain degree, using another idea as power. Can you maybe use a bit more power than the legs, those sorts of ideas? Rather than this idea of we get to the top and want to hit it with the hands. I think it'd also be just spend five minutes and think about where does speed come from? For me, I think a lot of people. Yeah, hands and arms, great speed, but not if they're getting this way. If they're going that way, that's a different that's a different mm. feel. And I think spending time with that and being okay with a couple of dodgy strikes to start with, in terms of mm. I'm I'm gonna throw the golf club, I'm gonna feel wider, I'm gonna feel as wide as physically possible until the backswing, I'm gonna feel even wider on the way down, I'm gonna rotate a little bit, and I'm gonna just see what happens to the ball flight. I think you'd be quite quickly surprised that the left going left will quickly disappear and we'll have another little pattern that I'm sure we'll we'll fix it. But I I don't think Neil Alex would ever really change a lot about your golf swing. I think it looks, and I think that's where people get misaligned. They think they have to change a lot about their golf swing. I don't know what you think there, Alex, but I don't think there's a lot that needs to be changed. No, no. I think for me, when you have to change a lot with somebody's pattern, it's because, and again, I'm sure you'll completely agree, when you have to change something a hell of a lot, it's because usually they get way too out too quickly in which the case the lesser of two evils is being too far from the inside in my opinion because naturally every reaction is to get the club back on the inside so you're already on the inside but it's excessively inside so you just need to make it a little bit less inside to kind of tighten that dispersion um and then obviously you'll get rid of the super left and then that dispersion pattern will tighten that dispersion pattern will tighten um and then you'll see, you know, as soon as you can control that way left, like you said, you're going to see a big, big improvement with your game. Yeah, a lot of it can just be a conceptual change in your mind, Ken, of like exactly as Pete said, like where does power come from? Am I prepared to feel? Because there's no doubt if you get rid of a little bit of this, right, it's going to feel weaker. You know, does it translate to a weaker ball flight? No, like, but there's no doubt, like, you know, the backing behind it and like getting it close, this feels like, oh, my God, I'm going to hit this into next week. Right. So getting rid of a little bit of that and having a bit more width on the way down, body more, it no doubt is going to feel a bit weaker. And the other thing I would probably add to it as well is that, so I think often um, when it comes to iron play and driver swings, we do think that the two are radically different, right? So we're trying to hit way up on our driver and we're trying to hit way down on our irons. And I think sometimes that can create your goal swing as well, is that you're also thinking, okay, I want to be Rory and hit seven degrees up on it. And you also end up a long way. So you can like, you can probably, you know, try and actually flatten that out a bit. You don't need to hit so up on your driver. Um, and that will that'll probably help you get rid of a little bit of this as well, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, don't know if that Yeah, makes- and just just briefly, like like Pete was saying briefly as well, it, it, exactly like Baden was touching on as well there. You need to almost change conceptually where you think power is coming from. Because mm. at the moment you've got a hell of a lot of power coming from the arms. And the wrists, which, yes, they contribute for a hell of a lot of power in your golf swing. But you've almost got zero rotational power, right, in your body. Your body's yeah. super shut at impact. Um, there's not a lot of rotation to the pelvis, to the chest at impact. So actually getting rid of a little bit of lag, for lack of a better term, um, and actually increasing a bit of rotational power will offset the other for kind of the first piece. And then you'll see that. In actual fact, power can come from a lot of different sources and not just from throwing those hands at it. Totally. And that's just the last piece for me, Ken. Just a lot. What is your pitching like? What's your just around the green side pitching from sort of 30, 40 yards? Yeah. 
a um, lot of uh, inconsistency. Every once in a while, there's one that you know gets five to eight yards, five to eight feet from the pin. Everything else, though, you know, I'll, I'll chunk it. I'll hit a thin right, left, and then yeah. up here. So yeah. So that's, what that's what, what you've got here is you've got a you can almost liken your pitching to your driving, and this same philosophy of just getting a little bit wider with the shaft on the way down. That's going to really help you control loft a little bit better in general. And I think if if you get tired of hitting balls with the driver and you don't want to work too hard on that in terms of you don't want to kill yourself in the heat or whatever, hitting a lot of sort of wide arced pitching shots would give you a really good sensation of what it takes to hit the driver. And then you take that feeling from there to the driver. And like Baden says, that gives you a real good idea then that the swings aren't too far apart. Hmm. And you can actually work at your short game while you're working at your driver game. And all of a sudden, all parts of your game get better. Awesome. Thank you. That's helpful, Ken. Hopefully not too much information, but I think often, like I, I always think that most students and golfers get the most out of changing the way they think, you know, than they do right. actually like fixing something radically with their, because you can change the way your body moves. And, but if you walk away from a golf lesson um, with a totally brand new golf thing, but conceptually you've got no idea why you're doing it or, you know, what the whole principle behind it is, you might as well have not even done it because you won't do it next time you come back because you don't, you haven't grasped it conceptually. So you can, if you can grasp it that way, then you can make the physical change. So, yeah, I reckon everything can move closer. You can like hit driver like you hit pitch shots, I would say, you know, and you can slowly move your concept from everything being this way, lots of lag, lots of hitting up on it to I'm going to try and hit my driver a little bit more like I'd hit my seven iron and fly it down and those sorts of things and change your mindset that way a touch. So, yeah, but really cool, guys, and hopefully, Ken, that was really, that was helpful. Yeah, so, it was. Thank I mean, you. I've got one little question. Just for, Someone's actually asked a question. What kind of drill? I know you've just talked about probably, what's the one drill, Pete, you would probably just give to, to Ken? The one drill I'd do to Ken is I would ask him to go up to the top of the backswing I think I would agree with Alex. Keep a little bit wider at the top of the backswing. And as quickly as you can, in theory, in the downswing, feel like the club head is going away from you. Literally feel like the club is getting a little bit away from you. And don't be scared to start and feel like the body's just turning a touch in the downswing. So as you can do that, I think that little movement, just get that little bit of a rehearsal. Just feel like you're throwing the golf away as you're turning. I think that'll widen up your arc and you'll find a better strike. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Ken. Thanks for sending your swing through and being a guinea pig. That's really, really cool. Like you, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Ken. I mean, not to put a point, too far to point on it, but like you've got you've got all the tools there. Like I teach so many people that would kill for your, you know, physical attributes and be able to generate speed, but you just need to be able to, how do I control that and um and create a um a repeatable action? But great work. Okay, okay. Tyler, you ready for this, brother? I'm ready. All right. So, Tyler, talk to us about your world and, you know, where you've come from, your hopes and dreams, and what we can do for you. Okay. Well, um, I don't know about hopes and dreams, but as far as the, the golf swing is concerned, um, from South Florida, um, been playing for about 20 years, um, you know, have always been about a 90s player, um, have worked on a number of things in the past. Um, but, you know, have kind of just like Ken said, have, have, you know, I have a pretty good idea of, of how impact is supposed to look. And I know that I don't look correct at impact. Um, my hands get behind me there. Um, my hands are on my, my back leg there, a very vertical shaft, no lean, uh, no real rotation. Um, net result is kind of like Ken said as well, very left shots, very right shots, fat, thin, uh, just kind of all over the place. Totally. I can, yeah, we could see that. It's very, it's very, very handsy and it just becomes so difficult. Like when I'm, when I'm teaching people and trying to get them better, the first thing I say to them is I don't really care about your good shots if I'm going to be completely honest, because everyone hits good shots. Like this is why driving ranges are full right? all the time is because everyone's yeah. hit that great shot. It's like, how bad is your baseline? You know what I mean? And when I look at this, you're, there's no doubt you would hit incredible shots, but your baseline would also be really low. Like, you know, you can actually see like that's hitting like the very bottom groove there, isn't it? Sort of thing on the club face. Um, and it's uh, obviously there's no sharply. So when you've got this much hand action, obviously, there's 
so much variation in face angle and, you know, it could be one minute it's a seven iron, one minute it's a six iron, one minute it's face left, one minute it's face right sort of thing. So it's very, very hard to get a high baseline with that. So, Alex, do you want to sort of lead us off how you sort of – actually, before – Yeah. I'm oh, sorry, even before that, Alex, I'll just ask Tyler one more time. So, yeah, give us an idea once again of your concepts. Like what do you believe to be true? Like how do you think about your goal swing and what are your fundamentals? Yeah, I would say things that I've worked on in the past are are kind of getting steep and across it, kind of making sure that the, the club face doesn't get too far open. Uh, I used to have a big slide on the on the downswing. Um, to be honest, I probably have too many swing thoughts. Um, yeah. And you know, I I I can if if I take a short swing, I can get that impact looking much better. But anytime I go to a full speed, full swing, um, this is what I get. Um, and I think that you know. Like I, I could probably nitpick it, but I, things look pretty decent about my swing and, and probably it's just a motor pattern for 20 years. I've been having the same release and just can't quite shake it. Interesting. Alex. Yeah. So for me, the first thing I would dive into, like you're talking about conceptually there, um, is something that we touched briefly on and I touched briefly on quite a lot is, uh, what is an ideal impact? An ideal impact for you is not an ideal impact for somebody else. That's the first thing. And when people look at an impact and they say, I've got an idea of what impact should look like. Do you have an idea of what impact should look like for you? Because you should look further down that hole and think, okay, have I got the right amount of speed? Do I generate, generate the right amount of loft on the club to get that shaft lean? And that's how you then kind of wheel it back to, uh, getting into your correct alignment to impact. Um, but your action is awesome. Like you've got a hell of a lot of good going on with your action. The one reason why, and the main reason why people flip at impact and you get people that always dial onto lessons and they talk about, oh, my fault is I flip it. And uh, my fault is I slide my hips too much towards the target. It's 99.9% .9 likely that those things are making you completely functional and they're making you hit good golf shots. Yeah. So if you want to get rid of the flip, you need to actually dive further into it and think, okay, why do I need to flip it? I need to flip it to square the club face, right? So where does my club face get wide open? So if Bane, if you want to just, yeah, if you want to just wheel it straight there to the top for me in down the line and face on. So you actually get into a great position here, like really, really good. Okay. Love a lot of what you're doing here. There's a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of lateral motion. Um, your chest stays a little bit over your right side. Not much of a problem. The main problem that you need to fix is this club face. And what happens here during transition is you see that this club face works way open here. Okay. As soon as that club face works way open and by open, we mean, uh, is when the toe predominantly points down at the ground. Okay. Um, by way open here, you need to do something to square that face. That face on the way down is way open. Okay. So to square it, you do a great job of squaring it just there from about, go a couple more frames. Yeah. From about there, P five and a half down to six there. You do an amazing job of squaring that face. Right. So then, if you wanted to tighten your dispersion and get your pattern a lot tighter, we need to figure out what's going on with this face. So then you would go back and you say, okay, what's the grip like? Um, how's your grip looking at a dress from face on? So Baden, if you whiz it back from face on to a, a dress position and we check the grip, you zoom in on that for me. Grip looks relatively standard. No problem with that at all. So, okay. the 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 club face opening is not necessarily coming from the grip. And we can see that it comes from what goes on at the top of the swing where, okay, you could work this one of two ways. Would we work it, the lead wrist to get a little bit stronger or would we work to make the lead wrist, you know, you could do it during this position here where you'll get a player like a DJ or a Victor Hovland that would super, they'd have it quite bowed at this position and then they just maintain it throughout their swing. Mm. Um, I'm an advocate for, you know, I don't build to models, but if I was to have preferences, I would have it more extended like yours is at the top or cut because it advocates for a little bit more depth to the hand path, right? So 
you move the club in a great way to the top of the golf swing. But for me, we need to just tidy up what goes on at the top. And so I would build you more towards a DJ-esque victory and maintain it throughout the rest of your golf swing so that then it could be more of a maintenance pattern and a reduction in the last roll. Alex, you just went a bit dark. Uh, just looking at it here as opposed to are you there, brother? We just sort of miss what the, your preference like. Ed, my back? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, no. Yeah, I've got you, yeah. Yeah, sorry, mate. Um, so it, it's, it's a question okay. is if you would do it during takeaway and then you'd maintain it during transition, which is what I'd look towards, rather than having this big move here of, you know, a lot of extension towards what you need to move it, a big flexion pattern. But to me as well, this, you know, you can look at this trail arm and if you go up to the top bait and from face on and you whiz it down to like between P4 and P5. Yeah. So, I mean, the pattern is awesome. Um, but for me, we just need to look at how we're going to control that face so that you can create the right amount of shaft lean on the way down that you that, that's desired. Um, and there can be less movement of the club face throughout the whole swing i mean pete not sure if you see anything else there but that's kind of where i see that yeah i mean uh, my preference um for me i i think I, I agree i totally agree with alex um my preference is relative to an address position if uh, i like i would definitely question the idea of um actually my first question was if i was to ask you typically how far you say you think you carry your seven iron to give me a ballpark of yardage? What sort of yardage would you typically carry that seven iron on a good strike? I think uh, one fifty-five. Okay, so for me, there's plenty, plenty of speed there to warrant a stronger grip. Now, the reason I would question that is working into flexion is going to change your swing shape, and as Alex said, the swing shape is brilliant. Swing shape is definitely a massive, massive plus on your game. And I definitely look at the, at the grip and think, is that an easy win? And I certainly even look at the club face, and the club face looks to me set slightly fractionally more open. I think certainly one of the questions you could ask yourself is as you just sort of stand there and just maybe just look at your sort of hands at address, if any of your hands are, say, inward at address, not outward at address, I think that would give you a natural tendency of how your hands maybe could or should set or in at address. Because I think when I look at your grip, I think, okay, the grip is neutral to weak. Could you go stronger on that? You could. What would that do to a positive effect on the club face? That would strengthen up the blade. That means you'd have less swing thoughts, and therefore you could probably work into, and to be totally open and frank with you, you'd hit the ball left for quite a period of time because I would have given you a golf swing that would have made you a little bit worse to start with because you're used to flashing your hands over to be, like Alex said, your hands, let's say, flip to a certain extent. That's, that's what we want to call it, a buzzword. Because it's almost saving you. Like I like says, couldn't agree more. And there are options. There is not one blueprint. And I think you would do best to do both. I would actually maybe hit 50 balls in a strong grip. Know that you're going to hit it left. And then think about how your body needs to move in order to then hit it functionally straight. Because your pattern right now is saving you. It's a great up and down swing. The club face is slightly open. And everything about it, your impact saves you. It's, it's like it's designed to save you. Otherwise, you'd hit it right again. Giving you a stronger club face, you'd only do that so long before you kept hitting it left. I think then you'd move differently. I personally think that would be the better way to go. But like Alex said, even if you went lead reflection, the story is still the same. The story is the same. The club face again is stronger, and you then manage that for impact. And I think it would be to your benefit to try both because I think we both said at the start there is literally no one way to to fix both players. But I would definitely agree with Alex that the club face needs to be stronger in a way for you to manage your golf swing a little bit easier. And I think although stronger sounds dangerous, it is actually just going to stabilise your loft and strike a little bit more. Does that make sense, Tyler? It's such a, it's a tricky one. Whenever, you, yeah. whenever you're moving someone's club face around, their grip and their face, it changes because we know that face is king largely, you know, like the ball is going to sort of, is going to go where the face is pointed initially. Um, 
Tyler, if you if you just have a quick look at the club face, yeah. okay, let's just imagine mm-hmm. the club face to be open, right? All I've done there is I've twisted the club face open, and I'll put that over my right shoulder. The club face is relatively weak at the top of the backswing. Now, in order to square that club face, I could either have lead wrist flexion, so twist my lead wrist, like Alex said. There you go. The club face is now strong. Perfect. As long as you hold that all the way through, you're brilliant. Now, if you leave the club face where it is, you're going to have to throw your hands to square the club face. That's your mechanism saviour. If you set up for a few shots with a closed club face, just to get an understanding of what a closed club face feels like, you have to get the handle for the forward to now get a better strike. Now, it doesn't matter if you had a flex lead wrist, like Alex said at the top, or you fundamentally had a stronger grip. But either way, you would start to move slightly differently to manage strike. And I think you better, you know, definitely in a good course to try both. Yeah, exactly like Pete's saying. And that's what is really good about online lessons is I'm sure Pete does the same as what I do, is you give kind of numerous solutions and you expect feedback from the student to give you, okay, this one worked the best, so let's run with it. And exactly like Pete said then, I'd almost get you starting here with a super shut face and a really, really shut position here past the ball, get you to take the club away and then feel what you have to do to re-square it to get to impact. Okay, and realign from being really here and really rotated to where you are, right? To them feeling, what have I got to do to square it to get back to there? So I'm really rolled this way. What have I got to do from here to get that club face back square? Okay, and that, that again is another solution like Pete was saying. And a real simple drill, Tyler, is to set up with the club face closed and try and hit some blocks, to mm-hmm. be honest, because you've got the club yeah. face closed. Mm-hmm. If you flip yeah. it in any way, shape or form, it's going over your left shoulder. Start to hit a few blocks. <coughs> your hands are going to move in a certain way. That will give you an appreciation of what a strong club face can do, just one. You can understand how the body will be a more passive through strike, for better strikes anyway. You might take it a bit loft off. You'll turn your seven iron into sort of this, you know, one club less and you can hit a bit further. And then it's up to you how you manage that, whether it be a stronger grip or a little more flexion. It's, but it's not just singular to irons. I think you would have to test it relative to short game and driver across the board. For me, the simplest win is changing the grip at address, but it's the same thing if you had flexion. It's, mm. it's, it's completely up to you. And I think both of those ways would really, really help. Yeah, it's, it's is that something you is that something you've ever done, Tyler? Uh, think about flexion. Is that you've tried that before? Have you changed yeah. it before? Are there any of those two things you've done? Yes, definitely. Um, I think I have in the past tried adding flexion on the way down. Um, I probably you know that probably makes the, the, the that might be the easiest for me because I've kind of done that in the past and maybe I've gotten away from it. So kind of keep the backswing, but then on the way down, kind of add it. I'm not sure if that. I think that that was one of the options. Mm. And how did you how did you fare with that option? How did you get on? Well, I, I think my problem is sometimes I don't I don't stick with with any one swing thought because I just you know I, so <laughs> join the club. <laughs> yeah, bingo. <laughs> no, you're right though. That that would be absolutely fine. And we, we Alex suggested towards the top, make sure the club faces. I said address. Your goal here is to come back to the impact. As you enter mm-hmm. delivery, so certainly from halfway down with the club face, more suitable to the shot shape you're trying to hit or the delivery you're trying to hit. So as long as the club face is innately stronger by that point, I think you're in a good position. I think you'd be better placed. The earlier you can get it in a suitable spot, it's less reactive at the bottom end of the arc. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think but an issue I had whatever you when, feel. I, when, I, when I tried to when I tried to flex it too early was my club got very laid off and then I kind of pulled down on it. If that makes yeah, sense, yeah, that's. Yeah, correct. That's yeah. why, that's, you know, but we're all different. I could, we could give the same drill mm-hmm. to two different people and it would, somebody would react differently because your swing is so, let's say, really on plane to a really nice extent. You don't really want to mess around with it. Maybe the stronger grip is better, but it doesn't mean necessarily if you think the right lead wrist faction in a different spot, that wouldn't work. It just means you'd have to feel innately comfortable, but it sounds like already, you know, two different ideas you might feel comfortable with more one or the other and that's like alex said that's the best thing about online lessons is hey here's two drills which one do you think and don't do it just over one day do it over two days with two different clubs three different clubs Mm -hmm. and start to present an idea that way (laughs) great thank you totally and just just 
got to throw this swing back up here really quickly. Like if I was going to add something and we were to go into like the, the conceptual stuff um, really, really quickly is this. Just let me get this up here. So the reason this is, like, you know, obviously the big cat, so not a bad model, but this is a, probably a really cool model for you to actually watch, I would say, right, because this was at Royal Melbourne um, during the President's Cup, which was at the end of 2019. And you might never have played, or well, you probably haven't, uh, here in, on the sand belt down here in Melbourne, but you cannot hit the ball super high around these. You can on, you know, so, in some shots, some situations, you've got to have that flight that goes bounce and skips and, like, you need to spin it and, like, it, it's often windy. And so Cat came down here and it was a – he literally – it was like a master class. You've never seen anything like it. Justin Thomas was there back like this and sending things up in the air and the course just ripped him apart. And Tiger walked around just going, you know, and hitting these little knockdowns. Like he literally didn't hit the ball above head height for the entire golf course, uh, for the entire event. And what he did was like just absolutely uh, pick it apart. But he hit shots like this the whole time, Tyler, right? So what he was doing is he's pushing his body forward and around there, right, with sharp length, with like slightly stronger grip, and he's going forward and around, okay? So he's he, and so his visualisation or his imagery is a low ball flight, right? So what he would consequently do would stay on top of it, have his wrist into, into a left wrist in deflection and go forward and around with the body. So he, he would, his imagery would change in his mind, if you know what I mean. And I think that's what probably you need to do is you need to, even though you're probably playing in a beautiful dome there in, uh, you know, Southern California, you need to pretend you're playing, you know, at St Andrews in three weeks' time when it's blowing an absolute hurricane and the wind's coming into your face and you're like, well, how am I going to flight this thing down and get it to go through the wind? And I guarantee you, like, you know, maybe I'll just strengthen this up a bit and maybe I'll get a little bit of shaft lean and maybe I'll just push it around and let my body go around. And when you change that imagery in your head, more than likely you can you can change all the other stuff as well. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, that makes, that makes perfect completely, sense. Absolutely. I completely agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree with that. That's a great thing. When you talk about that and and getting, yeah, getting the small wins from not only this, it's a it's a way that I attack a lot of players as well. Is you ask them, okay, what are you like at hitting a low bullet into the wind? I can't do it. Okay, (laughs) why? There's a reason why you can't do it. Now, now think why you can and try and keep going and keep trying to hit one for me and keep trying to hit that shot and watch you know big cat hit that shot and and see. The difference is, and once you improve those little things, you then actually like, okay, my low ball flight is actually now my stock shot because that's how high it should yeah. go. Totally. Especially for and you. It becomes, it becomes a conversation then that you're actually working ball flight rather than technique. Yeah. You can use your ball yeah, flight absolutely. rather than looking in the camera all the time. It's like, hey, I'm adding a shot to my repertoire here. I'm actually going to play two weeks on the banks now where I've even said perfectly, you know, flight everything down if you're practicing. You know, use something like a sand iron or a, a gat wedge and try and turn it into an eight iron. Hit it as low as you can, really thump it low. And it becomes like I'm practicing a shot rather than a technique. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, makes total sense. I kind of hit it like I don't hit it like Tiger, obviously, Tyler, right? But that what Tyler, uh, what uh, Tiger is doing there, probably because <laughs> I was brought up on these golf courses, right? That's how I swing it all the time. You know, I hit my driver like that, believe it or not. Like, I'm not. I'm definitely not like over here going that way and like this yeah. action. I hit my driver like he's hitting that. So um, yeah. Did Did so, you just refer to yourself as a big cat of Australia? Well, you know, <laughs> I'm glad you brought it up. I think Nate, he did. I think, I think he definitely did. Everyone knew. All right. So okay. All right. I'm going to edit that part out of the recording. But anyway. So okay. <laughs> we've got Jeremy. We've got Jeremy there. Are you there, mate? Thanks for that, Tyler. Hopefully, any last questions? Thank you. Thank you, guys. Wrap that up. No, that's okay. All good. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Jeremy, I think you're going to be our last one today because um, our fourth hasn't arrived, unfortunately. What a shame. It would have been cool to fix his action up, but that's completely fine. Let me just get this up. And while I'm doing that, tell us about yourself, Jeremy. What um, what do we need to know about your past, um, your concepts, and where you want to go with your game? I grew up playing golf with buddies and my dad, but nothing like super competitive or even close. It was more of a hacker, right? Just baseball swing, go out there and try to hit as far as you can. Um, last about two and a half years, I got fitted for clubs, got serious about it. Actually started trying to build up a handicap. 
was in the 20 to 24 range for a while. Um, now I'm at a 15, um, started basically fix my hips, um, and more of rotating rather than, um, kind of sliding. Um, so it's allowed me to compress my irons better. Yep. Um, but at times my misses off the tee are, um, hooks, um, which can be frustrating. And at times I've learned that I can sort of fix that by trying to swing more out to the right a little bit. Um, it gives it a bit straighter ball flight, but not sure if that's the right, if that's just a band aid. Um, I've been working recently, uh, trying to shorten the backswing. I had a bit of a, not a bit, but a big overswing and across the line. Um, so now just trying, trying, my irons have been really solid lately, but I know they, I sometimes can get inconsistent with them. My driver used to be a big, big slice. Yeah. Now it's maybe a just five a yard ball. fade. So, <laughs> yeah. So I'm <laughs> wanting to turn that into a draw, but my irons do draw. Um, but yeah, so I'm just trying to get that same feel. Uh, my swing thoughts are just basically keeping that my head down and using my right arm to, for the takeaway to pull the club back. And then I use my left arm to bring the club down and release. Um, so yeah. And I, I tend to feel like I haven't really released, but I was going to let you guys kind of diagnose a lot of this stuff. Um, and possibly more of a, Bring, I probably need to get my hands closer to me and the takeaway, but again. Just, there sounds like there is an absolute hell of a lot going on in your head right now. Yeah. Right? Oh, so hey, not, I'm, really, a, oh, I'm a software engineer. I'm a software engineer, right? so I'm very mechanical. Let's, let's, just, let's yeah. just go one question. Let's just go one question. What yes. is the worst part of, because I the drivers, the drivers obviously a different entity. We can't see that. Yeah, so we, we get good imagery, right? But relative to the iron swing, what is the one bad shot that you think, hey, that, that's just got to go for me to be at least a better golfer than what I'm at now? Yeah, um, I would say that that left hook off the tee just kills me a lot of times, especially on par threes. Um, sometimes It just depends on the day, but a lot of times it's like I get scared that that ball is going to go in the other left. fairway or out of bounds. Left. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, I can understand that. I can see that. Yeah, I can see that. And you would prefer to see, um, you would prefer to see a small draw. You prefer to see a small fade, or you not really mind as long as that left fear goes away. A uh, small draw. Because you said you, you small draw, and you hit a small fade with the driver at the moment. Correct. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, from, so for me, babe, if you just went down a little bit further, maybe sort of down a sort of shaft parallel. Yeah, on the way down for me, mate, and just take Justin down to the same thing, just yep. about halfway down for me. So, the first thing I would say, fundamentally, I think when I looked at your swing uh, a minute ago, I thought this guy can swing it. I genuinely thought, fundamentally, from a coach's perspective, there wouldn't be a whole lot that I would work on with you. I might do a bit of testing here, there, and everywhere just to get your ball flying confidence up. But let me state from a golf coach's perspective, there really isn't a lot that you need to be worrying about in terms of your golf swing. Now, the only thing I, I would say, is, Bain, if you go from, sit, from from that final parallel to just through strike, I'm just going to see how we go through the impact area. So I think that's really, really clean. The only thing I would say is if you are looking to remove the left, and I say this based upon the, not the imagery that I see in front of me, I say this based upon what you have you know, stated that you're worried about. You're losing it left. For me, I would say that you're almost a bit of opposite to the guy that we just talked about. I feel like your arms get a little bit wide from you in the downswing. But I think, again, that could be a cause of the club face being slightly open. Normally, when someone throws their hands and arms at, they're trying to catch the club face up. But for me, I feel like the arms just get a little bit wide from you relative to the golf ball in transition. I'm sure if you carried on 
with Justin Rose to give you something to, to compare that to. Justin Rose went down a little bit further just before strike. If you just go just before strike. One more frame. If you take a look at where his gloved hand is, mate, he didn't relative to the golf ball and just drop a line down from his gloved hand towards the golf ball. Just drop a line down. What you'll see there is his hands are pretty much on top of that golf ball early. And if you maybe did that with maybe your left, it's only fractional, but it's certainly a little bit behind. And you'll take a little look yeah. at that right arm. Again, it's just a little bit behind you. If you were seriously trying to get rid of an overdraw, then I would maybe look at the way in which the arms are. And I would just maybe think about maybe speeding up the arms a touch relative to the body sequence. But I certainly wouldn't be changing a huge mechanical idea of your game or stripping you back or trying to really sort of change huge volumes. I would just maybe ask you conceptually, have we ever thought about maybe just trying to get the arms a little more in front of the body on the way down, maybe speeding them up a little bit more so that maybe on the down swing, they're just working a little more in front of the body. Almost a really nice idea is to try and feel like the right hand is sort of working to the left thigh on the way down. Almost, I always joke with my juniors that I'm trying to get my right hand to my left thigh, a bit of sort of cat and mouse. And once they almost catch up, you start turning. That would get your hands a little bit further forward. You might compress a little bit more. What you'd have to consider, though, that is that might slow the rate of maybe the face. You might hit a few more, let's say, straighter to the little fades. And if that bothers you, you could maybe strengthen the club face. But I, I think. I think you swing it really, really, really well. I remember seeing this swing a minute ago when Baden was doing it. I was thinking, I hope he doesn't ask me too much about this because <laughs> I think this golf swing looks very, very good. I don't know what you think, Alex. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm completely the same. The, the one thing I would actually dive down with this action is I would look at how you're, during the back swing, if you, if you wind it back to him uh, to address Baden and then you get it moving throughout the back swing, you can see that your head actually dips in the backswing and you don't really get out of the ground enough, right? Okay. So you kind of, I, I would look a little bit towards how you use the ground because like uh, Pete was saying, you do a hell of a lot right. But for me, you're kind of here. You get, during your backswing, you get a little bit lower. And then from here, because you got a little bit lower and you stand up, you kind of throw the club, right? So exactly like Pete's saying is... I'd look and to, to a really good drill that Pete's going on about there and, and getting that left hand in is just doing a simple split grip drill. So you split the grip, you turn to the top and you get that grip out in front of you more All and right. you just really get it out in front of that. Let me just stop the chair so you can actually get up. And oh, okay. So, yeah, so a little bit of a split grip drill. So you kind of get here. And you're feeling like you get out of the ground a little bit more in the backswing. And then during transition to that P6 position, like Pete was saying, where you're trying to get the club more in front of you, I'd feel like you get that club more here. So you can see how I'm kind of unloading and loading the ground a little bit better because your whole action, like Pete was saying, is actually superb. Love a lot of what you do. But I think if you completely change your concept of trying to get this club a little bit more in front of you, try and feel like you kind of get out of the ground a little bit more, stretch your rib cage a little bit more, get a little bit taller in the backswing as a feel. Feel from here that you get this club way more out in front of you here. And you can see now how I'm loading back into the ground. From here, okay. then you can actually explode correctly through the ball okay. rather than what I see. And that yeah, I, think, I think you'd be, I, I think you, I think he's absolutely right. I think what would be great as well is much like, um, talking to Tyler a moment ago if you were to go ahead and hit a load of knockdown punch shots you would yeah. naturally start to draw your hands further forward that's for sure your hands would definitely cover it better um, but the only thing with a punch shot is obviously you're always trying to drive down in low maybe just add in that little bit more rib extension on the way back and then get down to hit that low punch shot so you'd get in those two variables of heights like Alex said but I, I think I'd have to ask, ask you a deeper question relative to your golf and say You've obviously got the setup at home, wicked as a golf coach. That's brilliant to see at home. How often do you get to play versus practice? Are you practicing more than you're playing, yeah. or are you play more than you're practicing? Um, I'm practicing more than I'm playing. I I practice about an hour, Good hour way. and a half every day, and then I play probably awesome. once or twice a week. And what do you think on the golf course? If you were to, and I'm going to ask you a wider spread question. Let's say you include everything of your game. Every single yeah. start of your game. What's the worst thing of your game? Um, it was struggling off the tee, 
honestly, with the yeah. driver. The sh- my short name stripping has been solid. Pretty good. Um, bunker play was bad for a while. Got a lesson on that. Got that fixed. So it it was literally just the the driver was eating me alive there for a while. Um, once I got the irons, getting the compress the ball more, um, which that was yeah. like with the hips fixing my hips and not basically my knees, my right knee turning out to the right so much. I mean, basically creating the depth with my hips, which helped. And that's helped with the driver. So I think that's why I'm still kind of keeping it on and on the course and not in somebody's backyard or house. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, when, when but, you're, when you're, when you're, when you're really, when you're like really off with the driver, like really, really off, where do you feel like it's going to go? Uh, it's going to go right. It's going to go right. Okay. So the club yeah. face is obviously a little bit open and therefore the hands and arms again, a little bit more in a way. That they're helping that club face. So if you if you think about mm. again, it's look at your a grip. little bit of an overswing too with the driver, because um, I feel like I have to build up the power and irons. I can kind of I've been dialing him back a little bit, um, but with the driver, it's still uh, in my head. So I, that's what I, again, if you I look can, at. If, yeah, go ahead. Go sorry. No, so um, Baden, if you look at Carl's grip. If you just zoom into the grip style address there on the right hand side, you're going to see a fairly, you know, for whatever I think he's sponsored by Strixon, you can see the Strixon grip. You can definitely see maybe one knuckle, I would say, on your. It's a very different style grip, which is going to have a very different style on the club face. Now, if you're fearing right, again, let's understand what that is. That is largely the majority going to be based on an open club face. So are we seeing a reaction on the way down with the hands and arms? Probably everything about the golf swing is normally a reaction. So you have to question if you went up to the top of the back swing, Baden. Um, it doesn't matter that the two different clubs. It'd be just interesting to see the club face at the top. And with the iron, can we go any further, Baden? A touch with the, with the irons. Yeah, look at that club face, Mark. Right? Uh, for me, that club face is just a touch too open. Definitely, when you consider, you know, the relative fear in the game is losing it right. That makes sense that you might be using your hands and arms in a way to try and catch up the club face. The club face certainly isn't excessively closed, nor is the leader is excessively flexed. So it would be a conversation whether or not you could explore a very simple win. Again, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible for you. Yeah. Let's say I gave you a let's say you you went outside in the back garden now and set up with a three knuckle grip on the left hand side and a very functional right hand, and you felt like the club face was stronger. Obviously, you a you're going to feel like the loft is coming off the golf club. Be you and I feel like the face is different. Would you think that you would start to implore a different downswing move to keep the loft on the golf club? I think you would move slightly differently. Yes. Especially if you're losing it right. So I think that because I I I say again, when I saw your swing, I said, don't ask me, because I think that golf <laughs> thing looks great. <laughs> but if you if you have a fear, a genuine fear, and when you hit it harder of the ball going right, we'll nine times out of ten players are almost hitting bad shots because they're fearing something, right? And you've got a guy there on the right-hand side that is coming out of his posture, he's getting up, he's got a stronger grip. I don't think you, there are more bad things that happen in the game of golf when a person has a weaker face and a weaker grip than there are people having stronger grips, especially people with speed, because you look like you've got a lot of speed. I would go ahead and try a stronger grip and see how the hands and arms react to the club face. I don't know what you think, Alex. Yeah, yeah, again, exactly the same sort of thing. Small wins are what will get you very, very far to improve in your golf game, irrespective of how bad or funky you think your swing might be. Okay, there's definitely going to be small wins in there that can knock one, two, three shots off your game. Do you know what I mean? And exploring those certain uh, aspects and variables in your game are what's going to be inevitably the key to getting you better. So like Pete said, um, changing your grip, a great way to just see if you can eliminate that big right shot that you have, hitting it as hard as you can and seeing how the ball reacts. Again, not not reacting to what you see on camera, but more so reacting to what is the ball doing? Okay, can I hit can I hit a bullet low draw? Okay, with driver, right? Answer is probably, you know, yes, no. Can I hit? a low fade can i hit this shot and this is then 
going into Tiger's nine windows. Can I hit those nine shots? Okay, and if I can't hit those nine shots, which shot can't I hit? And why can't I hit it? And then you can dive a little bit deeper into the small wind, okay, just by looking at your ball flight. Okay. So strengthening the grip and then doing that um, separation of hands. Yeah. Um, split grip drill. And I think, yeah, yeah, I think – go on. Go on. Go Sorry, on, I, was just, no, go on. I mean, the reason I sort of got this up just really, really quickly uh, was because of what Alex was saying, I think, you know, Jeremy, is that – and the, it comes back to, like, trying to hit down on iron potentially and, like, sweeping your driver a little bit more. But if you – look, obviously – I, don't, I never use Kyle as a model, right? But I just saw, obviously, what Alex was demonstrating, which was something which was so much more, obviously, right hand under, which allows the right arm to work slightly differently. But this is, it's a very different movement with the body and with the head, isn't it? Where he, he doesn't go down and turn down, like, you know, with the shoulders or anything. So this is a little mm -hmm. bit more level here, isn't it? You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, and yeah. Obviously, you're hitting an iron, right? You're hitting an iron here on the left. So... You're going to be inclined to try and hit it down into the ground. But if you look at Kyle, it's a little bit different in terms of the direction. And then obviously, I mean, coming in just that little bit more behind the yeah. ball coming in, isn't it? You know what I mean? With his body as opposed to in front yeah, of you. You get a little bit ahead of it. As, yeah, exactly that. And I mean, Baden only uses Tiger's swings because he's obviously the big cat of Oz. So he's not used to putting Kyle's up there. But exactly. He's, yeah. he's exactly right in what he's saying that. You can see the difference in where your spine angle, and I know it's driver versus iron, but exactly, yeah. You know, ex exploring the grip um, will help you, like Pete said as well, get into a little bit stronger position yeah. on the way down. I think I think Vaden said it right. Really, you know, when you change the grip, what that will change is that will change your forearm conditions, and yeah. it will make that right arm have a different journey. And for me, I see nine times out of ten students setting up with a. I definitely have a quite a strong preference for the right arm at address because I think it just needs to functionally work in a way that is useful for people. I would take a look at your right arm and think more that the instep of your right elbow is facing towards the target than maybe a little more towards us as the camera, just but a touch. Yeah. Just yeah. lowering your right arm would change the way in which your grip sits on it anyway. So just making that right arm a little bit softer, a little more like a bicep curl type idea. So, you know, rather than setting up with this sort of idea, now you sit up here, all of a sudden now my right arm sits differently. My grip's now going to sit differently. Now, if I set myself up with that move, so there's your move. I lower my right arm, the club face naturally opens. Totally. If I then re-square that club face yeah. and let my right arm return, all of a sudden now that club face is going to come in closed. So I would be very much trying to get you into a bit more of a right arm bicep idea, explore the strength of the grip. Now, all of a sudden now my right arm sits slightly underneath my left and down the line. We couldn't quite see that, but I would hazard to guess the right arm was a bit high. Get that right mm -hmm. arm a bit more under, a bit stronger grip. All of a sudden now that club's encouraged to move differently because of the way in which the forearms are set up. Mm -hmm. and I think you'd be surprised. People mm -hmm. talk about the grip. The reason the grip's so functionally a great way to talk about it is because the grip is actually affecting your forearms and how the journey takes. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can get that right arm a little more, you know, primed to come back where it wants, if you're set up here mm -hmm. and you've got to re-educate everything. I think it's a you know, slightly difficult thing, but definitely yeah. I wouldn't be trying to rebuild. I would just say, you know, maybe just think about a little more using the ground, like Carl, oh, using your body differently. But the okay. easy win there, for me, grip, right arm. Yeah, exactly like Pete's saying, a good way to get in that right arm that I find is you've got palm facing forward and palm facing to the sky. It's as simple as that, right? So I'd kind of set you up here. And I'd get your right shoulder working all the way under so that your palm faces the sky and then you grip it. And obviously then that completely changes where that's it. Okay. The cool so thing kind of getting it. it working more yeah. here, that grip changes, and then you'll be able to generate that position that we were speaking about just now. Okay. But again, don't be scared to just go and hit a load of bun bunch of punch shots, like just to feel yeah. that your hands and arms are working in front of you. Again, using ball flight, making full backswing, you know, making sure you're getting up to the top of the backswing and then hitting the punch shot rather than just hitting the punch shot in your mind because I think sometimes people can restrict, stay a little bit low, get up and then hit the punch shot. I think, again, that, you know, the idea of a punch shot does what? We take loft of the golf club. We certainly don't add loft. And when we add loft, we don't, we're not trying to open the face, right? When we're trying to 
hit punch shots or trying to close the face and shut it. So again, those ideas, and that sounds crazy, even that within the driver, you're not going to be adding off the face open. Okay. Yeah. The, the one thing you just got to be a little bit careful with punch shots is that sometimes people think punch shots is like squeezing it more down like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So again, no, no, no divot, no divot. Exactly. That can actually get your arm more on top, right? Because that feels like you can actually make it go that way. Whereas you want to be able to hit a punch shot that way. You know what I mean? With your yeah, right 100%. arm under. And that'll total it. So that's still a punch shot. You know what I mean? Like hitting from the side is still a punch shot because you've got your wrist angles that way. Whereas the bit like everyone, yeah, the biggest misconception with a punch shot is that it's squishing it into the planet that way. That just creates a lot of side spin and cuts it. You get your right arm under. And that'll actually allow, just like Kyle, like his shoulders work like that. You know what I mean? And when you get your right arm on top, your shoulders tend to want to work this way. And that's when you're going to slice your driver. So, yeah, the cool thing about okay. changing that there, Jeremy, is that it's a setup. It's not dynamic. You know, it's not moving. It's not something you've got to think of halfway through the motion. So if you get yeah. that, that's going to totally change the way your arms and arms and body can work and you'll be able to shallow it out a little bit more. and, and get a little. I, I would definitely just work setup and dump. 99.9 percent .9 of your swing thoughts yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> well and because it's been such a disaster in the past that i finally got it to somewhat reasonable yeah. so that's where it's like i i didn't obviously i had all these swing thoughts but i don't have them all at once it just depends on the day um because i've had yeah. to fix so much in the past where it's like okay it's it's this thing today um and so yeah so I, I just i've worked it out into baby steps basically to that's a great that is a I great would, way to be though because your intuition as a player your intuition as a player and reacting to okay this is what x is doing today so i need to rely on this feel is great okay so don't lose that and the ability to lose okay. that but we're trying and like Pete said, you're trying, you're trying to really dive deep into, okay, what is the one bad shot that you need to get out? And the one bad shot you said is the right going right. I think you said, okay, yeah, so going let's, right let's with the driver why that might happen and let's strengthen the grip and hit some shots course. with that. Yeah. Simple wins, simple, simple wins. Pete. If you can fix something, it sets up, fix yep. something, it sets up. It, it's so hard with a lot of this stuff because the, it's the simple things. Like you just said there, and it's you can you can go through a giant rabbit hole down either YouTube yeah. or whatever, you know what? right? There's we're, we're we're probably putting each other out of business here, but the amount of let's say set up ideas that will fix many people's ideas of flaws, you can fix a lot of people's ideas just with conception and a conversation and setup. Yeah. yeah, you're losing it right. Is the is is there a is there something we can do it address to help this move? But you can go and play golf tomorrow and not think about a hundred different things. Hundred percent. You don't, you know, try to fix stuff in your golf swing. Nine times out of ten, it's a reaction. Yeah, couldn't agree more. Awesome. All right, guys. Agree more. We probably Thank you guys. But Jeremy, I mean, yeah, that's. I mean, that's the advantage, of obviously, learning remotely or like online is that you can sort of just rather than. I mean, these are great events obviously but you might walk away from today and go okay which one what part of that do i really need to focus on um so just working with someone who can like whistle away and strip away all of the um you know your concepts and just give you what you need to concentrate on that's the most important thing right so try, try to watch youtube and understand how does that apply to me am i doing that am i doing that enough am i doing that too much it's impossible to fix yourself you need that guidance yeah. like something over you and checking in. yeah and it Sure. Again, exactly like Baden said then, sorry, it's just conceptually, you know, what is your idea of where you should be here? What is your idea of where you should be there? Not just watching YouTube videos and, and thinking, okay, he swings it like that. I need to try and get into that position. And that's, I was going to dive a little bit into briefly, that's why the messenger side of the app now on Skillist is very, very good, and very, very handy is because you can have that back and forth as easy as a WhatsApp conversation. You know, hmm. you can send a voice message. You can you can upload a picture, upload a video. Is this grip right? Should I try this? Should I try that? It's not always about, you know, just having a conversation with someone back and forward like we've just done now. Yeah, we've given you a couple bits to work on, but we've more so given you the idea in your head of, oh, hang on a minute. If I just do the small things right and I change a few bits, 
I'll see some big, big wins in the long run, as opposed to somebody breaking down my golf swing and me having to change three, four, five different things to suit their preference. Right? Yeah. You've yeah, done that gonna, five times. I was going to compliment you guys on that <laughs> with the, the skillist app with the messenger that I've I've used other platforms for online coaching and the messenger part of this app is just really really cool. Yeah. Thanks, Mike. There's plenty more coming as well. Like we're just going to like our our job really is to this is going to sound pretty grandiose, but we want to replace the in person experience. Like we want it to be so magical that why would you ever leave home? Uh, to actually go and get a lesson sort of thing. So, and we look, the so as we've described, so many advantages to learning remotely. Um, and as the tech improves and gets better and better, you'll just, you'll continue to get better, be, better and better and you'll never have to leave home sort of thing. So, so yeah, cool. And everyone, thanks so much for being here. Tyler, Ken, hopefully you got a fair bit out of that. Everyone out there, if you've got any questions, let us know. I'm at baden at skillers.com, but you can get the guys on socials. Pete, what's your your Instagram handle? Uh, Pete Lockett Golf. Pete Lockett Golf. And then, at, yeah, Pete Lockett Golf. Is at Alex Clap Golf, is it? It no. is, yeah. Alex, Alex Clap Golf. As simple as that. Okay. So simple you know, people. No matter where you are. Simple people, simple wins. Exactly. Alex, go and have a margarita and enjoy Spain. And uh, Pete, uh, hopefully I'll see you in London in a few weeks, potentially. We'll wait and see. Please do, man. Get, yeah, yeah. Drop me a message. We'll tie up. Yeah, let's All hope right. so. All right, team. Thanks. Guys, so good luck with your golf. We'll see you again for the next event.